Hello, in tonight's segment, it's going to be Garden Fresh Basil. Say hello to my co-host tonight, Pesto. Pesto has traveled long and far to give up its life for our better culinary enjoyment. So a round of applause for Pesto. Also too, my assistant Frankie is here making sure Pesto doesn't go anywhere. Pesto's looking a little worried. And we're going to do some fresh basil recipes. We're going to be making fresh basil aioli, fresh basil butter, and fresh pesto. We're going to show you how to handle the basil so that it doesn't oxidize on you and turn black, and how to apply the recipes once they're made. During the course of this, you'll note that we're going to concentrate on methods. The recipes themselves will appear at the end of the video. Remember, methods are everything. These particular basil recipes that you're going to get tonight I've used extensively during the course of my career in many restaurants and you're going to see how we apply them and what you can do with them. It's literally unlimited. You can use the basil aioli for sandwiches, salads, an accompaniment for steaks, chicken, fish, you name it. Vegetables as a dipping sauce. The butter, you can cook with it, you can apply it to sandwiches, you can literally make a grilled cheese sandwich with it. A lot of different variations. We're going to go through all of that as well, too. Also, too, take a moment to remember that the libraries need your support. So make sure that you are as active as possible with libraries through these trying times so that politicians don't think that they become obsolete. Libraries, public libraries in particular, they supply a lot of very necessary services for their communities. We want to make sure that those services are intact and continue. So we need your support. Are we all set and ready to go? See in front of me, this is basil aioli bread, excuse me, this is basil butter bread, and we have basil aioli sitting here so you got an idea of what's about to come. And um, when this video starts, I'm going to be eating because I'm hungry. Enjoy. This is our friend Pesto. Pesto's future isn't looking too good. As Pesto's about to be made into not only pesto, but basil aioli and fresh basil butter. Now you can see from this camera angle, and we'll move it up just slightly. Here we go. These little branches right here, these are the remnants of the last harvest that pesto offered up to our culinary delights. Okay, normally what you want to do with a basil plant like this is trim it from about this far up. That allows the plant to regrow. The potting soil that I used, I used an organic mix straight from Lowe's. I think it was Lowe's. And I also used tea leaves because in the summertime I like to drink a lot of fresh brewed tea. So, save the tea leaves, dried them out, mix them into the soil. That way you get the maximum harvest out of each bag of tea. Also, too, we did use some miracle Grow a couple of times to get things started. Very well watered, lots of sun. And these, this plant sprung out of three 99 cent little sprigs of basil that they sold at the grocery store. I believe it was Mariano's. So, with a little nurturing and a little effort and some water and sun, you can grow your own basil to extreme proportions and harvest it over and over and over again. So definitely something that you want to look into if you plan on doing fresh basil recipes and you like basil as much as I do. If you've got any Italian blood in you at all, uh, this is something that's literally a must have. Okay, now it's time to make pesto very simple and to the point sauce but there is one very important part of this method that you have to do if you don't you screw it all up and you may as well throw it out first off we have our ingredients in the blender we have our garlic in here we have our cheese in here we have our virgin olive oil in here now we're going to add our pine nuts and since we're using pine nuts even more reason not to screw up Okay, I'm going to take the machine and turn it on. Okay. 
Okay, we've given it a good head start. We know there's still a couple of pieces of garlic in there that aren't chopped up all the way. That's fine. Now, the reason we don't have the basil in here is because if you put the basil in too soon before the oil, what happens is the blades will tear apart the basil and when it gets exposed to air, which it will because it's in its food processor, it will immediately oxidize and turn black right before your eyes. And it'll be bitter, it'll taste like one of your car tires. You want no part of it. So you want the oil and the ingredients here to be chopped up and started first, and then we're gonna add our basil afterwards. The basil is already picked and cleaned and ready to rock and roll. And we're gonna add it and we're gonna start back up again. We're literally gonna force it in. Now when you put the basil into the machine, make sure there's none hanging over the edges. If there is, you'll just have to take the top off one more time and make sure that everything gets put on the inside of the machine. This way it doesn't not get mixed in properly. And we let the machine do its job. You can see somebody doesn't want to go. The oil protects the basil and prevents the oxidation process. That's why the basil is always added last when you're using fresh basil. Okay, now the way we've made it here with this particular recipe, this is excellent for not only keeping in your refrigerator or you can freeze it. Now, something you need to know, when you're refrigerating it, let alone when you're freezing it, when you're putting away and storing it, you want to take a piece of plastic wrap and put it flush onto the pesto. This prevents the air from starting up the oxidation process with any exposed leaves on the very top of the pesto. Then you lay another piece of plastic over the top of that container, then snap your lid shut tight on top of it. This will give you maximum shelf life with the least amount of problems with anything turning black. Okay? And we're all set and ready to roll. There we go. We did all three recipes. Pesto survived. And he's only half his original size. A little round of applause there for Pesto. Thank you very much for contributing for today's program. Yay, Pesto! Okay, now it's time to make some basil aioli. And just as before, we have everything inside of our blender. We have all of our seasonings in there, our eggs, our chives, and we're going to add our vinegar. And we're going to turn it on and give it a head start. While this is running, we're going to add our oil, our, our olive oil, and our corn oil. And remember, we always add the oils towards the center of the mixer on the inside so that the blade has a chance to blend everything evenly and quickly. That way we don't have problems with separation. got a pretty nice thickness to this. I'm going to add just a touch more corn oil. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to add our basil. Once again, we're protecting it from oxidizing by adding it after this has already been started.
and the chef's favorite friend, the Cuisinart, is done. And here you go. It's your proof in the pudding. You can see how thick and rich it is. Now it should stay right where you put it. Very nice consistency. Two week shelf, shelf life without a problem. Making sure that of course it's covered properly. Piece of plastic flush against it, then in a nice airtight container, extends your shelf life. Shouldn't have any problems with three weeks. And this is great with all kinds of different dishes. You know, hot cold pasta, you can do this for sandwiches, an accompaniment for steaks off the grill, fish, shrimp, pork loin, it's just it's endless there's so much that you can do with this it's just up to you and like I say this is one of my favorite accompaniments to use in a restaurant and at home basil aioli okay now we're going to show you how to use the basil aioli recipe for a hot pasta salad first thing we did we cooked off our penne which is a tricolor penne and we have some broccoli florets also cooked off with this. And we'll set this aside and you can see it's still steaming hot. And we have also cut up and ready to go some chicken and basil sausages, tomato, sun-dried tomato basil sausages. And we've also got some zucchini and some summer squash and some yellow bell peppers, excuse me, orange bell peppers, and some plum tomatoes already cut up and in here and ready to rock and roll. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna literally add our hot pasta and our broccoli to this dish. And we're going to give it a mix. Now it's going to cool off just slightly and it's not going to actually be served hot, it's going to be served warm. And what we're also going to do is we're going to take our basil aioli and add this to it. Now because it's warm and not hot, we're going to be able to mix it up without the sauce separating. This makes for a much heartier version of a pasta salad. And what we're going to do is give it a little goosed up presentation. And we're going to literally add it to the plate right like so. And we have a very nice hearty dish. Lots of protein, lots of fiber, plenty of carbohydrates, and actually not that much fat because we didn't need that much to make the aioli itself. There we go. And we seem to be pretty well set. Set this to the side. And in just a couple of minutes, you have yourself a really good dish. Fresh basil aioli, warm pasta salad. Greenfield sausages, and we have a really, really nice summertime dish. Fall, even in the wintertime. So if you want to serve a pasta salad in the wintertime, this is a really cool route to go. Okay, time for basil butter. Now, again, very straightforward. We're going to protect the basil by adding it last. We have all of our ingredients in the machine already. It's ready to rock and roll. The butter is at room temperature and soft. Here we go. Now we push it down so the blade has better contact. Let me turn it off for a second. Get everything pushed in. Make sure it's blending evenly before we get to our basil. Our recipe calls for green onions. 
I use chives because I add them. All right, we're getting a nice mix finally. We're gonna add our basil. And then with the butter in here, that'll coat the basil and prevent oxidation. We don't want this turning black on us. We want this to be a nice bright green. And that should do it. Finished just like that. But we're going to make sure we're going to scrape the sides and give it one last little shot. Make sure everything's in there. Done. Just like that. And we've got that really nice green color that we're looking for. The basil's been preserved. And now what we're going to do is we're going to roll it out into a stick and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And now we're going to take the basil butter and get it ready for the freezer or the refrigerator of your choice. Easiest way to deal with it, just like we do in restaurants. We're going to make it into a stick. That way if we want any we can cut off as many slices as we need. There will be exact portionings for whatever it is we want. It's an easy way to take care of it. It doesn't take up much room. You don't need an extra container. And we'll dig out the last of the butter in here. Okay, now what we're going to do is even it out. Okay, now take it and bring it over like so and use your hand to tighten it. You see how you got a nice even roll? Simple and to the point. You take it, and you roll it up, quite like so. I'll take this, pinch the ends. Don't worry about that loose piece, or this loose piece. That's not a problem, because I'm going to show you how to deal with that right now. Lay down our plastic wrap, take out a sheet, and drop it in place. Take the basil butter and set it in place like so. Then, do like that. Squeeze the air out of it, wrap it up like so, and then one more time. Play like that. Set and done. Easy bleasy. Okay, we are going to roast off some bacon, and we're going to do this for a couple of the dishes that we're doing during this series. Since we're editing and putting everything together in a mishmash order here in the kitchens, so we're going to go over cooking bacon. Cooking bacon in a skillet is a waste of time. It's a mess, and it's inconsistent, and nobody in the restaurant industry cooks bacon in a skillet. <clears throat> it's always done on sheet pans consistent, even cook, very easy to clean up, very easy to control, very few mistakes. So you lay your bacon out on a sheet pan. Now we bought thick slice and it was a little erratic in the inside of the package so we trimmed it up, got rid of the extra fat, trimmed up the thicker pieces that shouldn't have actually been in the package. And now we have it laid out so it can at least consistently cook for us so that when we get to the point where we make our sandwich and we make an appetizer out of this it'll be ready to use. Now when you're cooking bacon in an oven you want to go at about 350 degrees. That's a very good universal temperature for it regardless if it's thin sliced or thick sliced. That'll give you a nice even rendering of the fat. 
the flavor is not in the fat. It's in the meat. So before you put your bacon on your sheet pans, you want to trim off the extra fat, especially when you're doing this at home. In restaurants, they leave it on because, number one, it's time-consuming, and number two, it cuts down the visual part of the presentation where the customer thinks that they're getting a smaller portion when actually all we do is trim off the fat. So for that reason, more often than not, the fat is left in place when it comes to the bacon. Then at that point, it's up to the chef to buy the leanest and best quality bacon possible so that doesn't become a problem. Okay, here's our roasted bacon right out of the oven. As you can see, evenly cooked and evenly browned and no mess. Baking paper comes right off the pan, gets thrown in the garbage. Easy cleanup with the pans. So if you're making bacon, this is how you want to do it. On baking paper, with a pan that's got a rolled edge on it, and you're all set and ready to go. Remember, 350 degrees, if not, 325. And you're all hooked up and you're gonna be cooking bacon like a professional. Okay, we are gonna be making a basil butter bread, which is basically a huge step up on garlic bread. And we're gonna be using our basil butter recipe and we're gonna be using some fresh baked French bread. We already have sitting next to this cutting board that you can't see right now, but you will in a second. And we're gonna cut, as I am doing now, some nice fresh plum tomatoes. And notice that I'm cutting them on a slight angle so that we get bigger slices. And they'll cover more area, like so. And what we're gonna also use is some fresh curd mozzarella, some shaved Parmesan, and we're gonna use some sliced provolone cheese in addition to our basil butter. Now the basil butter that I'm using actually has some sun-dried tomatoes ground into it. So it doesn't have as bright a green color as a normal fresh basil butter would have but that doesn't have anything to do with the basil being oxidized and turning color for any reason. That's just pigmentation that's been beaten into the butter with the food processor and it's the end result of that process. So not to worry about that. And then I'm going to show you how to wrap this stuff up and we're going to get ready for the next round. Now very important to have a sharp knife, especially when you're doing something like this. So that the, so whatever it is that you're cutting, in this particular instance, plum tomatoes, so it doesn't slip on you. That's usually the reason for cuts, is slipping knives. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is get our French bread ready. Now, a common mistake for cooks and chefs in restaurants is that they will take and melt the butter first and then put it onto the bread. You'll see this a lot in pizzerias and in Italian restaurants where they'll take the butter and they'll melt it and they'll drop their garlic powder in there, yum yum, and they'll stir it up and then they'll brush it all over the bread and now you've got really oily bread that kind of sort of tastes like garlic. We're not going to get into any of that. Whenever you're putting any type of butter on here, the butter should be room temperature and soft, not melted. This gives you a consistent and clean taste throughout the garlic bread, or in this case, the basil garlic butter bread. So we are gonna literally take right from the loaf that we have here, and actually we're gonna switch positions, and literally spread it on, just like you would as if you were making a sandwich. You're using mayonnaise. Now, taking into consideration the fact that the bread is relatively thick, don't be cheap with the butter because once it melts, it's gonna have a chance to sink in. And also too, remember, the bread as we're making it does not have a sauce. This is the sauce. So we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing, no matter what we're putting on here, isn't gonna be left high and dry because we don't have enough of the butter to give this entire package a substantially decent taste, which is what we want. 
can see how easy this spreads. All you have to do is just let it sit and come to room temperature. And once it's soft enough, spread it on. Now I'm using a pastry knife, but you can use a butter knife, you can use a rubber spatula, whatever you have handy, the back of a knife, doesn't matter. All of it works and works well. So don't think that you have to have a specific tool for this. You don't. Okay? And also, too, when you're spreading it, spread it out to the edges. The, butter's, the bread's going to soak it up just like a sponge. So don't worry about excess. Obviously, you want to be neat around the edges because anything that falls off of the bread goes onto a pan. You got it in a hot oven, 425 or so. You don't want it burning on the pan and just getting smoky in the house. There's no reason for that. And besides, it's just a waste. You made all this nice bite basil butter, all this fresh basil. No reason to waste it. Okay. And we're almost done. Very simple and to the point. Just like that. All right. It's nice and smooth. We're gonna come back. We're gonna drop our tomatoes. And the tomatoes, there's really no specific way to do this other than the fact that you want to try and cover as much territory as possible. Now, one of the things you can also do is, at this point in time, you can add pepperoni. You don't have to put tomatoes on it. In this case, we're going to put tomatoes on it, and then later on, I'm going to probably add some andouille sausage when I go to see Ford versus Ferrari, because that one's on my little movie list. And I think that this will be quite a nice choice for movie munching. All right. Now, one of the things you can also do is you can sprinkle Parmesan cheese on here. Any way you want, doesn't matter. Totally up to you. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take some shaved Parmesan and spread it across the tops of the tomatoes, all the way across. This way we've got a nice sharp contrasting flavor to go with the basil and the tomatoes. And we're going to do the exact same thing over here as well too. And then we're going to change things up a little bit. You can see that it's really easy to spread this out. It's not a big deal. Okay. And like I say, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You don't have to use tomatoes at all. You can forego tomatoes. And you can use different cheeses. You can use something that's a little bit stronger. In this case, what we're going to do is this one's going to get fresh buffalo mozzarella. And when this melts, this will go across the entire bread, the entire piece. So we won't have to worry about it. We'll take this one and we'll split it in half and put it at both ends. And when that melts, it'll literally cover the entire bread and we'll be in great shape. Now the second one, we're going to do slightly different. I myself am a provolone fan and the best way to cover anything thoroughly when it comes to pizzas and flatbread like this or garlic bread is to use sliced cheeses. So in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to use sliced provolone. We'll let it overlap just slightly to cover up any little extra spots on the corners. And we'll get two more slices, one more slice, one more slice. And just like that, we have everything covered. Very simple, very to the point. And now, we're actually even ready for the oven. One of the most important parts about taking care of anything like this is the actual storage of the product. Now that we have the bread done, we're going to lay it in place on top of this plastic wrap, pull out a little bit extra, tear it off, overlap it, come back, do it again. And this way, we squeeze all the air out of it, and we roll it, and done. Just like that, we're ready for the freezer. I'm going to do that one more time. Set it down. Okay. Make sure it doesn't get tangled up on you when you're doing this. And again, over. Air comes out. Roll it over. Done. Simple and to the point. And now, all the garlic bread, basil butter bread, that we just did. It's ready for the freezer or the refrigerator and we can move on to the next project. Okay, we're about to put 
our basil butter bread into the oven. It says tomatoes, hard cheeses, provolone, and of course, our basil butter underneath this. And when this comes out of the oven, we're gonna lay in the bacon that we just roasted off. We're gonna have ourselves one heck of a sandwich. Okay, time for lunch. Our bread is out of the oven. We're gonna do a quick split in half. You can see this done nicely. And we're gonna take our bacon and literally lay it in. We've got some nice thick cuts here that we're gonna take full advantage of. And after all, this is the United States and you can never have enough bacon. All right then. Oop, get in there. He doesn't want to go. And literally we flip the top over on it. And now what most chefs will do is they'll take a clean towel and we'll press it down. And that makes it easier to eat. Also, I'll squeeze a little bit of the extra butter out, as you can see here. And we're all set and ready to rock and roll. We got ourselves a great baked, literally baked cheese sandwich. Provolone, fresh basil butter, bacon, Romano, Asiago, Parmesan. Doesn't get any better than this. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for a minute. I am actually hungry. So here it is. Say goodbye. Goodbye.